that um, quite a few agricultural issues over the last 50 years have got contaminated by, if you like, emotion and ideology. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, I want to get back to the science. Um, I don't want to prejudge the science. I'm an economist. I think there's a lot of emotion. Um, and uh, two areas I highlighted in the talk. One was the use of GMOs. We know that climate change is going to make um, agriculture more difficult and more risky in Africa. And so my supposition is that African agriculture needs all the help it can get. And for the last 14 years, Africa, like Europe, Africa basically imitated Europe in banning GMOs. Mm -hmm. And at the time of that ban, there was really no scientific basis for the ban nor, as far as I can see, over the last 14 years has there, become, has there generated any scientific evidence for, after all, in the rest of the world they're using GMOs. Mm -hmm. um, it's just Europe and Africa that are kind of out on a, on a limb. Um, and meanwhile, Africa, as the climate deteriorates, it needs rapid crop adaptation. GMOs are one way of speeding up crop adaptation. And what I detect in the opposition to GMOs, what I keep hearing in the opposition, is usually not science, it's emotion. It's hostility to American corporations, <laughs> it's health fears, it's this fears, it's that fears. It, um, uh, it's, um, but it's not science. There, there are scientific issues like biodiversity, um, uh, but the way to handle biodiversity may well not be a blanket ban. Um, that seems to me, a priori, quite an unlikely way of, uh, of addressing issues of, of biodiversity. It implicitly places a huge value on preserving biodiversity um, rather than generating biodiversity through, through, through genetic modification, which is another way of getting biodiversity. Always the, the bedrock should be hunger. Um, not hunger in Europe, hunger of kids in Africa. They're the ones who are going to bear the brunt of mistakes. If we, from prejudice, resist GMOs rather than from science, if we, from prejudice, resist commercialization of agriculture rather than from science, then the people who pay the price of that are hungry children in Africa, not ourselves. And so we have a responsibility uh, not likely to uh, fall back on our prejudices. After all, you're scientists, mm -hmm. right? um, and so um, uh, if if you don't think with your heads, don't expect anybody else to. Right? And so, uh, you know, European food policy debates to my mind have been the popular debate has been hijacked by romanticism and fears um, rather than it's overridden the science. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to get back to, to the science um, and uh, here's the scientific community, the agricultural scientific community and especially it's, it's young people. Uh, and the, the people who can be influential in forming opinion are young agricultural scientists. Um, if you think with your guts instead of your heads, then we haven't a hope.